So good evening, everyone. Again, um, welcome and thank you for joining today. So again, we will start with a mindful breathing exercise to quiet to quiet our mind and to bring our mind our mind in moment and present. And we can try to have good intention motivation. <clears throat> you know, to be greatest help and benefit to others and oneself. We need to reduce the selfish attitude and self-grasping ignorance. because they are the very root of our problem, suffering, as well as problem, suffering to others. And we need to cultivate and in increase the bochi, the mind, and wisdom, realizing emptiness. which are the root of true ultimate happiness of oneself and others. And in order to reduce and eliminate the selfish attitude and self-grasping, and to generate and fully develop the Bochita mind and wisdom realizing emptiness. We need to overcome all the internal obstacles, interference, such as all the negative energy, internal negative energy of negative karma, defilement, obscurations. And to do that, we need to engage in purification practices. such as Vasasattva purification practices. And for that, we need to be reminded of the importance of that practice, as well as we need to continue to study and learn more techniques. and so forth. For that very reason that I'm going to listen to the teachings 
and trying to reflect, contemplate, meditate on the teachings as much as possible. And may all these activities become cause and condition to actualize our highest potential, the fully awakened state. So we can be a greater self benefit to all sentient beings equally. Okay. Uh, pr oh, yes, thank you. Praise to Shakyamuni Buddha, to the founder, the endowed, endowed transcendent the destroyer, destroyer, the one gone, gone beyond, beyond, the, the full destroyer, destroyer, a completely perfected, perfected fully awakened being, being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, conduct Sugata, knower of the world. world. Supreme so guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer from the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for it. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, Buddha homage, homage to the Dhamma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage. homage. To all to worthy of respect, respect, bowing with bodies as many as, as all realms, atoms, in all aspects, with supreme faith, I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous non -virtuous actions, perform, perform only all virtuous, virtuous actions, actions. subdue your mind thoroughly. This is the teaching of the Buddha, a star, a visual aberration, a flame of a lamb, an illusion, a drop of dew or a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud, See conditioned things as such. Through these merits, may yeah, sentient beings attain the, the rank of all seeing, subdue the, the four falls, and be delivered from some size ocean, but perturbed by the weight of aging, aging, sickness, and death. death. Part of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Thus did I hear at one time, the Bhagavan was dwelling in a mass of vultures mountain in Rajkriya, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration of the categories of phenomena or profound perception. Also at that time, the Bhagavan Mahasattva Arya Lokiteshwara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then, through the, the power of the Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aryavalokiteshwara. How should any son of the lineage who trained who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aryavalokiteshwara said this to the Venerable Saradvatiputra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form, emptiness is not other than form, form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not efficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factor, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element, element and so on, up to and including no mind element, element and no mental consciousness element. element. There is no, no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance and so on, up to and including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely...
Having completely passed beyond such error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awakened to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the great mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequal, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared. Dayata, Om, Gate, Gate, Paragate, Parasam, Gate, Bodhi, Soha. Shariputra, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from the concentration and commended the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Varavateshwar, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan, having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharadvati Putra, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Vrikteshwara, and the surrounding in the entirety along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. Saji Pumanki So today is the last um, um, session on Vasudeva purifications. So we have been uh, discussing Vasudeva purifications. Um, purification, the importance and the role of the purification in general. And um, and there are many purif different practices of purification, and we are discussing specially specific purification uh, of vasatavas. Um, in that, in that, then, as you can see, we use visualizations. We use um, recitation of the mantras. You know, um, we use contemplative meditations. Um, so, um, so within these um, meditations, um, and 
for any kind of purifications, whatever form of practice purification we um, engage into to purify our negative karma and the delusions, obscurations. Um, as I mentioned um, last week, um, as Buddha explained in the, the Sutra, you know, the four opponent powers, the needs of those four, four opponent powers is very important factors. And, and strong practice of each of them is um, important factors. And so, and as, um, as I mentioned before, there are many different Vasada purification um, practices in terms of the tax, you know, that, and here we have been using one particular practice. So, starting with the motivations, like every practice, try to practice with the bodhicitta motivations. Um, both to the motivation is very important. Whatever practice we do, you know, trying to do the practice, not just for oneself, but for the everyone, all sentient beings. So bringing that factor is very important. Um, so, um, the practice become more beneficial, more effective, more stronger, more powerful, you know, so, and then uh, um, at the very beginning of this practice, you know, um, there's the refuge and bodhicitta at the very beginning, start with refuge and bodhicitta, you know, and that is part of the, the opening power of the objects or reliance that we spoke before. And then there is the visualizations of the Guru Vasudeva, father and mothers, you know. And after you have visualized the Guru Vasudeva, father and mothers, you know, there are some other visualizations, you know, invoking the wisdom um, beings and so forth. Um, Then we try to reflect, contemplate on um, and re recollecting and uh, all the negative karma that we have created, those which, can, which we can recollect, remember, and those which we cannot remember, recollect clearly, but you know, by contemplating, you know, all the possible negative karma that we might have created. And with that, recollecting, um, and recognizing such is, such negative karma or actions is not helpful, beneficial for oneself and others. Instead, it's harmful for oneself and others. With that understanding, trying to generate strong regret, you know, without any delay, as some of the master says, you know, if someone throw a poisonous snake in your lap, you will immediately try to get up and, you know, um, try to um, protect yourself. In the same way, similarly, you should feel that way, you know, without delay, you know, immediately trying to apply the antidote, trying to regret. You know, if you regret, it becomes less strong, yeah, it becomes less powerful, the negative karma. That very moment, if you regret, you know, if you rejoice in your negative karma when you create, or of the past, then, you know, it make it more stronger. So, you know, and we talked about last week, you know, um, there is positive regret, negative regret, and we talk about uh, this regret, positive regret, that um, help us to move forward. 
And once you have that strong regret, that is the opening power of regret or remorse. Right? That is the second opening power, you know. And once you have that strong regret, then we can recite in terms of this particular practice in the page number, very beginning of the page number, where it says, Bhagavan Bodhisattva, I request you to cleanse, purify, you know. So I request you to help, you know. I request you to help to cleanse and purify, you know, all the negative karma, all the defilement, all the obscuration of myself and all sentient beings, as well as our degenerated and broken places, you know, um, such as, you know, um, our refuge commitments, you know, our lay vows or ordin ordination vows, um, you know, and if you are taking Bhagavad commitments, vows, and on top of it, if you are taking tantric vows and so forth, you know, whatever all those places, commitment we have made, you know, whatever we have degenerated in, you know, so to purify. Mm. And then you visualize, just as you make a request, the Guru Buddha, uh, Buddha Sadhava, Father and Mother, extremely pleased, extremely pleased. You know, it's like a, a parent who want to see the child to, the child is having some issue, problem, and they want the child to see the problem and, you know, wanting to change that. And then the child recognized that, you know, oh, you know, I have this problem and I want to change, I want to transform and asking the parent, please help to do that. The parent will be so happy, you know, that you finally recognize your problem, you know, and that you are willing to change, transform, and for that you are asking the help. And similarly, you know, Guru Vasudeva was extremely, extremely pleased. So that we try to visualize that, you know, um, it helps our mind. Mm. And all their excellent qualities, you know, so um, Guru Vasudeva was, so if you can, you know, if you can, then um, at the crown of the, the father and mother, you visualize om syllable, white om. At throat, you visualize, you know, both father and mother, you know, red are syllables. At the heart, you visualize, you know, blue hung syllables. So it is like om ah hung. Um, at the, the um, is those places, you know. And then at the heart, on top of the moon disk, you can visualize whom or maybe white normally is whom, but here you can also visualize white whom. And then surrounding in the clockwise, the hundred syllable mantras, you know, all standing and like crystal clear, you know, like from like the mantra is around like that, and the hung syllables inside. And when you look from that, you see all the hung syllables, also the back, because it's all kind of crystal clear, you know. Um, and in that, uh, all of them, and standing, you know, clockwise, you know, and also making the sound, not only the syllable, but making the sound of each syllable, you know, Om Vasasat Samaya Manipala is whatever the syllable making their sound as though you, know, you are listening, uh, recorded, you know. Mm. All their excellent qualities are gathered together in the form of light and dissolved into whom at his heart, whereby his splendor, force, and strength are perfected. Mm.
So all the excellent qualities of all the Buddhas of 10 directions, you know, all the excellent qualities gathers in the form of, you know, white light and dissolve in the Hung syllable at the Guru Vasatva and whereby that the Hung syllable become even more, you know, splendor, more powerful force and strength and are perfected. And again, like all the daily, all the different daily practice, you have to, we have to be aware, recognize that the garlands of the mantra and the seed syllables, as I said, the home, they are just not ordinary syllables or sound. In each sense, in reality, there are Guru Vasasatavas, compassionate, exalted wisdom. Okay, Dharmakaya wisdom. Compassionate, exalted Dharmakaya wisdom, but manifesting into that sound of the mantra, manifesting into the, that letter or syllable. So that is very different from ordinary sound and ordinary syllables. This is not ordinary. This is actually exalted Dharmakaya wisdom, compassionate exalted wisdom, Dharmakaya uh, wisdom that is manifesting in that. Also, while you recite the mantras, whether you do the long one on the syllable or whether you do the short one, Om Vasa Sattva Ahum, the short one, whatever you do, from the those garlands of the mantras and the syllable, Hung syllable, then you visualize white light, nectar flow. You know, from that, through the fathers and mothers, you know, and then um, also you visualize Either all sentient beings surrounding yourself, you can visualize all sentient beings surrounding yourself. Okay. And on top of each of those sentient beings, you can visualize Guru Vasudeva just like yourself. You can visualize there also. Of course, even within the sentient beings, if you want to do more details, then there are, you know, in the front, your parent, on the right side, you know, your other family members on the left side, the relatives, you know, then, um, you know, um, backside and surrounding and all sentient beings. That is one, one, one way. And sometimes you visualize your enemy in front of you, your parent on the right and left, and then, you know, your other friends back and then surrounding all sentient beings among them. So there are different way of doing it. Sometimes they visualize your enemy in the front. Sometimes you visualize your parent in the front. So, you know, whatever you, you know, that is one. Another is you can visualize at your heart. Okay. Of course, if you have initiations, then one can visualize as a sadhava, but if you have no initiation, you don't you visualize as yourself, not as a deity. But whatever you visualize at the heart of yourself, you visualize a um, white moon. In the middle of the white moon, you visualize yourself, the ordinary yourself, and then surround all sentient beings in that moon. So in that way, instead of visualizing all sentient beings surrounding you, you visualize all sentient beings within your heart on top of the moon. So there are two ways you can do, you know, whatever you feel more comfortable, more easy, um, more helpful, you know. Um, so if you visualize on yourself, there's a moon disk, on top of the moon disk, middle, you visualize yourself, the ordinary yourself, and then surrounded by all other sentient beings. In dead cases, then you don't have to visualize all sentient beings surrounding you. They all are in your 
heart at the moon. And then in that, then when the Guru was sort of us from that, while you are reciting a mantra, then, you know, um, white light nectar flow, like taking a shower, you know, and entering through your crown and cleansing and purifying, you know, all your negative energy, you know, all your illness, you know, all your negative karma, all the defilement, all the obscurations in the form of very dark, dark energy, you know, like when you have not taken shower for months and months, when you take shower, then you know all the dirt, very kind of, very thick, very dark, very black, you know, like that, you know. You can visualize cleansing and purifying in that way of yourself and all sentient beings. That is a, 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 the moon, this is your heart being completely cleansed and purified. So that while you are reciting the mantra and while you are doing that visualization, is called the opening power of antidote in these cases. The opening power of antidote. So here the antidote is using the mantra in that visualization. According to some of the masters and commentaries, they say why, you know, we use both nectar and light, you know. You can just use nectar, you can just use light as well, but if you use both nectar and light flowing, um, you know, it has more more meaning and also it has leave more stronger imprint. So it is said, you know, the nectar, you know, symbolize or represents the method, the compassion. You know, the light symbolize the wisdom, um, you know, the wisdom. Um, and also through that visualization of the light, then it creates an imprint or cause to actualize the, the method, the compassion. And by through visualizing the light, then it leaves the imprint um, to actualize the wisdom. So again, the using those light and nectar is again, on one way, it symbolizes the compassion and the wisdom, you know, both common and uncommon. Um, at the same time, it also leave imprint to actualize um, the method, the both common and uncommon method and the wisdom, the clear light mind, the clear light wisdom mind realizing the emptiness, the uh, ultimate nature. So that is um, in most in the most commentary you see with most of the daily practice in the light and nectar, you know. Mm. And there are many different visualizations of cleansing and purifying, you know. Um, I don't know whether um, I need to go all of them or not. Um, there is visualization of what is known as downwards. There is visualization as upwards. There is a visualization as instant visualizations. And downward is like taking a shower, you know, you cleanse and purify all from the, your crown, all the negative um, energy, all the negative karma. 
delusions, obscurations. You know, our world is like you visualize that you are like pouring a water in the bath. You pour water in a bath or a cup. You know, then it started to fill up. And when it started to fill up, whatever dirt, then you comes out after being flowing, you know. So in the same way, you visualize nectar and light going through your crown and filling your whole body from bottom to top, you know, filling with those light and nectar, you know. And then from that, all the, you know, illness, all the negative forces, you know, negative karma, defilement, obscurations, coming in the form of dirt from eyes, from the nose, from the mouth, from all the pores, you know. Like in, from the nose, all these negativities coming in the form of what you call the the snot, snot, from mouth in the form of mucus, you know, from ear in the form of ear wax, you know, in the from the eyes in the form of eye, what you call not ears. Sometimes you have this uh, crosses, okay. So you know, like that, you know, kind of coming in the form of all these negative coming in, to, in the form of those different dirt from all these different poor and then all being cleansed and purified. You know, that is kind of upward, you know, and cleaning in that way. And then another one is, you know, through the light and negative, especially the light, all the negative calm, all the, again, illness, negative karma, you know, the defilement, uh, obscuration being instantly, instantly being purified. Like when you turn the light on, the darkness is instantly dispelled. Instantly dispelled the darkness. The moment you turn on the light, the darkness is is not gradual, but it is instantly kind of um, dispelled. Same way with that light and nectar, instantly all the so. So sometimes you can do downwards visualization, sometimes you can do upwards, sometimes you can do instant uh, purifications. You know, sometimes you can do in one session, you know, maybe if you are doing long, maybe one mala of, of you know, downwards, one mala, during that one mala, upward, during one mala, you know, instant, or maybe uh, you can do. If you are doing shorter, you know, when you first seven downward, uh, the next seven, you know, upward, the next seven instant, or you can do today downward, tomorrow um, upward, then next day, you know, uh, instant, or you can do each of them one week, or you you find any of those among those three different. Um, visualization, if you find any of them more powerful, effective, or you can use that, you know. For some, they might find downwards more effective. For some, they might find upward more effective. For some instant, they might find instant. So again, you know, you try and then again um, try to see and whatever works for you better. Whatever works for you better. You know, there are so many different visualizations, you know, different. And we just, we just try and see what works for you, you know, what particular works for you better, which is more effective, which is more connecting. And then you can use that, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, you know, there. So that those are some uh, 
another visualizations, you know, like the crown of the Vasudha father and mother, there's a white home, and then you can visualize the hundred syllable surrounding that white hundred syllables. What's the syllable mantras? And uh, you know, again, again, the white light and nectar flow and purify all the your physical illness, you know, and all the uh, negative forces, you know, all the negative karma, especially, especially all the negative karma that we have created through body, such as taking the lives of others, you know, st stealing, engaging in sexual misconduct and so forth, you know, being completely purified and all the defilement, all the obscurations. And then, you know, again, at the time, at the cup, at the throat, there's a red syllable, and you visualize, you know, the garlands of other side of a hundred syllables surrounding that clockwise in the red. And again, the white light nectar flow from that, cleanse and purify, you know, all the um, illness, you know, all the negative karma, especially all the negative karma that we have created through speech such as lying, engaging divisive speech, harsh speech, you know, meaningless idol gossips, as well as all the delusions and obscurations being cleansed and purified. And from the then next, you know, at the heart, the hung syllable, and surrounded by the um, hundred syllable mantra in the blue colors, from that white light and nectar flow, cleanse and purify, all the illness, especially the mental illness, you know, especially all the mental illness being completely clean, purified, you know, such as depressions, you know, um, you know, panicking, you know, whatever different mental um, pain, sufferings, you know, mental illness we all, and then all the um, negative forces, all the um, negative karma, especially negative karma that we have created through the mind, you know, um, such as, you know, covetousness, ill will feeling, wrong view, and so forth. And then all the other defilements and obscuration then completely cleanse and purify, you know. And then, you know, for more Someone who have you know like high, have taken high yoga tantra practice, then there are also some other visualizations. You know, then receiving receiving the initiations, and you know, then um, with each of them, you know, uh, four times, you know, and then uh, and then you know also, yeah. If you do four times, then then you know from the board. Om Ah Hum, and surrounded by the Dalian Sadabhasa Mantra, all simultaneously, you know, in the three colors, all simultaneously of that white light and nectar flow, and then cleanse and purify, you know, all the illness of body, speech, mind, you know, all the negative karma created by body, speech, and mind, and all the defined, all the obscure being clean, purified. And through that, and then you know, visualize receiving the four initiations, you know, then planting the four um, potential to achieve the four bodies, and so forth, you know. And also there are some others, visualization as well. But at the moment, for general, we just visualize cleansing the body, speech, and mind, and all of them. Um, so that is another visualization that one can apply. You know, again, is is a different visualizations, slightly different from the previous ones. Um, and again, you don't have to be overwhelmed. Okay, that is one thing I always says. 
you don't have to be overwhelmed because there's so much. You just try to try what is work for them, you, and you just try to rely on that, you know, and you don't have to be overwhelmed because there's so much of you just, sometimes we don't know which is more amongst all these different, different methods, different techniques, different visualizations. We don't know what works better for us. We don't know what um, is more powerful, effective, or one which one we connect more. So we try all of them, and then we find out. And once you find out what works better for you, you just rely on you just keep on that. After some time, if you start, your mind started becoming boring, because this is something you have been doing all the time, you try another method. And because that can give you inspiration, because then it's something new, and your mind is a little bit more excited or something new, you know, because sometimes your mind can be become a little bit boring. That's something you have been doing all the time. And, and so, you know, that, but normally you just try to rely on that. That works for you. So we learn all those different techniques, but you, um, there is no, okay. And then, you know, in many other commentaries, you know, it also explain, you know, all the illness in the form of, you know, pass and um, blood, you know, like with, when you go to the toilet, you know, coming like that, uh, all the illness in that form, you know, all the negative forces in the form of, you know, in the text, it's talk about, you know, like, you know, some of the spirit harm in the form of, you know, like, um, in the form of, like, bear and animals, you know, like, what was that black um, scorpion and like that, you know. But I personally find a little struggle with live with that. So I personally try to do it in the form of unwanted, you know, unwanted cells, you know, in the form of that, you know. Because we constantly, our body is kind of flushing, you know, those cells and producing new cells and old cells. So in the form of that, there are good cells, bad cells, you know, the bad cells, unwanted bad cells in the form of that, you know. Um, so I think you can do that, you know. It's just um, instead of trying to do something with your struggle, because you cannot visualize, you try to just make it something that you can, your mind can make more comfortable and relate with, you know. Um, and that is what I say, you know, finding, be, being a little bit creative in your practice and trying to, when you struggle with certain visualizations, certain things, then you try to make it something, small changes, small shift, that then you don't struggle, you don't have to fight with it, but instead you can like this. So, and then um, all the delusion, obscuration in the form of, you know, very, like a dark energy, like a like chimney, you know, when you clean the chimney, all the black and dark, you know, coming like that. And then if you do, you know, more kind of extensive visualization, then in certain uh, commentaries, then they say, you know, the then the earth opens, you know, and there's, uh, there, you know, there is the Lord of the Dead, you know, upwards, and all the, these negative things goes into the um, Lord of the Dead's mouth, you know, and it satisfies that, and all your debts are, you know, given, and then, you know, and Lord of the Dead is very satisfied, very joyful, and all the debts are given, and then, you know, um, you put a, a 
Basra, double Basra on the mouth, and then a lot of dead turn upside down, and the, the earth which open flows it. If it's interesting, you can do that. You know, uh, uh, um, that is, you find in some commentaries, you know. Um, and another thing that sometimes I hear, and because that kind of caution could arise, is some people have difficulty because you are cleansing all this, your, your and all sentient means negativities, and then all this dark energy, negative energies going into the earth, and it, they feel like you are destroying the earth. You are, uh, you are polluting the earth, you know. Some people have that struggles while they do that visualization. And of course, in the commentary, you don't find that because I think that's such caution or not rest in the past, you know. And the way I the way I try to do myself, and that is what I explained is, is like you know with that those light and uh, nectar, which are actually Dhammakaya, compassionate, exalted wisdom. When they cleanse that, it is able to transform those negative energies into something else, something positive. So even it go under the ground, the earth, actually it bless it, you know, because it has been able to transform it. It's no more negative anymore. That negativity has been transformed into something positive through that um, compassion, exalted wisdom, energy. And therefore, you don't have to feel uncomfortable in that. Instead, you feel through that you are actually blessing the whole earth, blessing the whole um, ground, you know, and so actually sending the blessing. And so, um, because once you have that struggle, then, then your practice doesn't become so strong because you have that struggle with that. Mm. And the Vasasattva, the meaning of the Vasasattva, you know, is a word, there is a meaning, okay? I'm not going to go through that. I think if you go to FMT, and even there is a short Vasasattva um, booklet, or even you don't have booklet, you can print it from FMT, and with that you can find, okay, um, with each of that, um, the meaning uh, of each of that, if you want to know the translation of that with each of them. So there is a word by word, and then there is uh, the the whole meaning of that. Okay, whole meaning of the whole. Mm. So whatever different visualization you do, you know, whether it's a downward, upwards, instant, or other form of visualization, at the end of those visualization, one of the factors is that you imagine, you visualize, and you try to feel the negative karma, all this, you know, the illness, negative karma, delusion, obscuration, have been completely cleansed and purified. Having that, that strong belief, you know, that strong belief and confidence is important factors to make that practice more powerful, stronger. And that is also, I think, another factor because some people feel, even they have done this visualization and basal practice, still they feel whatever negative karma they have created, still they are not able to let it go, you know? Still they are bothered by that. Do you get it? Something that is 
even they have done all this practice, still they feel like they haven't, still it bothers them. Because they haven't been, they, they couldn't believe completely and confident that it has been cleansed and purified. Still they feel it is there. Do you get it? They still feel it has not been cleansed and purified completely. And that is what you, some people struggles. But when you have that strong belief, and when you try to believe with each after each of those practices, at the end, you try to develop strong belief or confidence that all those negative karma has been completely purified. You know, no matter how bad negative karma we have created, that has been completely purified, cleansed. And so that is also part of training our must. It is psychology. Psychologies, you know, is all in our mind. When we feel it is still there, then you feel it. When you feel it is gone, then you don't have to hold on that anymore. You don't, it doesn't have to, you don't have to be bothered by that anymore. And so that is one, and uh, important factors, you know, really strong belief, confidence, it had completely cleansed, purified, and imagine visualizing your body and yourself becoming like really like crystal clear without any um, tr trace of any negative energy, trace of any negative energy, any negative karma. You know, the five minute obscurations in, in that moment, you know. And then you try to, and then you try to meditate on emptiness. You try to meditate on the emptiness, the emptiness of the negative karma, the emptiness of yourself who has created negative karma. You know, then. The negative, um, the emptiness of you know the object in relation to which we have created negative karma. So the emptiness of three spheres, you try to meditate that emptiness. Also, when you meditate the emptiness of negative karma itself, the person who has created negative karma yourself, and whatever object in relation we have created negative karma. But when you meditate on negative karma, also it helps us to let go of, again, being bothered by that, something that you have done in the past. Do you get it? Because we feel so real, so real, then you are still grasping and you still are still unable to let it go, and therefore it still bothers you. But when you understand the emptiness of that, you know, when you emptiness in that, then you know, um, then there's no strong grasping, clinking, and holding very so strongly, truly. And when you do, when you don't do that, then it's let, easy to let it go and not be so bothered by that past. And so again, um, you know. Mm. So those, those are some of the important factors. So when we, when we, when we bring all this within the practice, it is just not reciting the mantra. It's much more than that. It's not just a word, you know. At the very beginning of the practice, you try to generate a very strong bodhicitta motivations. When you do the refuge in Bodhisattva, as the opening power of the objects, you already cultivate a strong compassion Bodhisattva mind. And then in between, you do certain other visualization and you recite the mantra in relation to that visualization. And then um, you meditate on emptiness. You know, when you have time, you can meditate long time or more time on emptiness, more time on Bodhisattva at the very beginning. When you don't have so much time, at least you try to do a short meditation, you know, 
on the board sila at the beginning and then at the end of each of those visualization, meditation and emptiness. And when we bring the practice of the bodhicitta and emptiness within any practice, then that practice becomes extremely powerful. Extremely powerful. And then definitely there's no doubt it can purify that no matter how um, how strong negative karma you know can be completely purified. You know, so those are the Especially, you know, if you are doing a, you know, like two, three sessions for weeks, months, you know, um, then, you know, you can, in certain, in some sessions, you know, you can visualize the cleansing and purifying, you know, in certain sessions, you can think of open, for opening power while you are reciting the mantras. At certain sessions, while you are reciting mantra, you can think of the karma and karmic result of each of those karma, you know, negative karma, how each of those negative karma can produce uh, diff four different results, you know. So meditating on, uh, on the karma and the karmic result, you know. In certain sessions, you know, you can meditate on, you know, the emptiness of three spheres, as we mentioned, the emptiness of the negative karma itself, the subject, the person who yourself who is creating negative karma, and the object to which negative. Sometimes you can meditate on the emptiness of that in certain sessions. In certain sessions, you know, you can meditate on bodhicitta. You know, so again, you know, especially when you are doing a long sessions. You know, one hour, hour and a half, or even two hours. You do that cleansing and purifying at the very beginning, and maybe in the middle a little bit, and the end. But most time, you can meditate on the lumbering. You know, whether you are meditating on emptiness, whether you meditate on the karma, whether you meditate on bodhicitta. So in that way, you combine the lumbering with this purification practice, then it becomes more stronger as well. You know. And also, you know, um, when you that sometimes it is hard to keep that visualizing, cleansing, purifying one and a half hour, two hours, you know, your mind. So when you have a few different, you know, practice within that, then your mind can focus more without being kind of losing the kind of um, enthusiasm. Hmm? Yeah. And you can not only with the Vajrasattva, but you can apply that to any daily retreat you do. You know, any daily retreat when you are trying to recite the mantras of certain numbers, and when you are doing many sessions and long sessions, you know, um, you can always bring the lumbering and focus on the lumbering while you that visualization at the very beginning of cleansing, receiving the blessings, realizations, but in between, within the session, you try to do um, different lumbering meditations, practice. Mm. And sometimes you can do the, you know, the visualizations in certain sessions, sometimes you can do the visualizations, you know, um, from the heart of yourself, you know, then sending all the um, offering goddesses, 
making offering to the, all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Arhat, you know, and all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Arhat, you know, this um, delightfully accepting your your offerings, you know, all your offerings, and then it cultivates in their heart, in their mind, and on that bliss, the voidness, you know, and then those all these rays of light and the goddess dissolve into your heart. Again, rays of light sent throughout the, all the ten directions. And then cleansing, purifying all the negative karma, delusion, obscuration of all sentient beings. And then leading them to enlightenment. And after you have led them to all the enlightenment, again, the, the light, you know, dissolve into your heart. So again, sometimes you can do that visualization. So in that way, you know, again, mm. so, mm. So how many ever was the uh, mantra you do, you know? 21 time, one mala, 10 mala, 21 mala in one sessions. Then at the end here you recite, due to not knowing and foolishness, I have transgressed and degenerated my pleasures, you know? Either due to not knowing or even we know it's not being mindful sometimes, you know. Sometimes we did, we make mistake, we create negative karma because sometimes we are ignorance, we don't know. Sometimes it's not ignorance and not knowing. We know it, but still because we are not mindful in that moment. Sometimes we are more aware and mindful in that moment, but the delusion too strong, because delusion is so strong, you know, you cannot control. So due to all of that, you know, we, we transgress, degenerate our pleasures, we create negative karma, we hurt and harm others and oneself, you know, all of that. Guru protect us, so here, Guru Vasudeva, Please be my refuge. You know, please help me to purify all of this. You know, be my refuge, be my protect protectors, you know, be my guidance, you know, be my teachers, you know, all of that. In you, principle, holder of the Vasra, and of great compassion. So that is what Vasasattva is, you know. The Guru Vasasattva is actually, you know, exalted. Dharmakaya exalted wisdom, you know, compassionate exalted exalted um, Dharmakaya. Pers uh, personification of great compassion, Lord of Transmigrated Being, I take refuge. And so with that, you know, we try to make strong, try to generate strong resolutions, okay? Strong resolutions that you know from now you know I will not make same mistake. I will not create a negative karma. I will not transgress, degenerate those places, commitments. You know? so making strong determinations. And within that, you know, there seems to be two approach according to the certain different masters and teachers. You know, according to some masters and teachings, is those which I can do 
those which I can reframe easily, I will reframe them and not transgress them. Those which are not easy, it will I will try to not transgress them and not to break or not to create within 24 hours, within two hours, three hours, making that kind of strong commitment, resolution, promise. That is according to some master and teachers. Because we know that some of them, no matter, you know, we, um, because we are still ordinary with a lot of negative, a uh, lot of delusion. So, uh, you know, despite the best wishes and intentions, still we might be, we will, we will, you know, transcreate or we will create negative karma. So that some other teachers, masters, Advice is in that moment when we do the practice, you know, no matter how difficult it might seem, we make a total determination that I will never engage again. I will never do it again. I will never create again. Making that strong, you know, instead of saying I will try as much as I can. So there are two approaches. And again, as we have to find which approach is most suitable for yourself, you know, whatever you feel more comfortable, whatever you, among those two approaches you connect more, you try to do that. Both of them is okay. Both of them coming from enlightened, realized masters, you know, it's just different approach. And both is okay. It just depends on which particular approach should be. And so you can do that according to that, you know. So with that, then we complete the four opening power within this practice, you know. And this one, the opening power of resolutions, you know. And after that, then we visualize the Vasadva replies. Child of the lineage, all your negativities, obscuration, as well as your degenerated and broken places have been cleansed and purified. So you can visualize, imagine that well, Guru Vasad was extremely pleased and, you know, with his omniscient mind, knowing the reality. And then with that, and he is saying, you know, all your negative karma and all the degenerate places and commitment completely cleanse, purify, you know. Like sometimes we have doubt of ourselves, okay? Sometimes we might have doubt about ourselves, but then we have someone like his holiness or some other masters that we rely on, we have high regard, we trust them. They say, oh, your negative karma is and purify, cleanse then you feel confidence. Do you get it? Because sometimes we are not confident with ourselves. And so someone from that, then it gives us confidence because of that, who they are. They are more enlightened than ourselves. We are not enlightened, something, something we don't know, but they are enlightened, they know what. And so through that, it gives you confidence. So that, Guru Vasad was saying that, then, you know, then it gives you more confidence and feeling that it has been purified in that way. Having said that, the Guru Vasatava, he dissolved into me, whereby my three doors become inseparable from my, by the holy body, speech, and mind of Guru Vasatavas. Okay. So, yeah. And that way, the Guru was uh, emerged with yourself. And we can do again and again that kind of dissolving and emerging yourself. And you try to meditate on your body and the Guru's body and the Vasasad of the deity bodies have become inseparable. Your speech, the Guru's speech, and the deity, the Vasada of speech, has been inseparable one. Your mind, Guru Vasada mind, the Guru's mind, and Vasada the deity's mind, 
has become one inseparable. And you try to rest and meditate in oneness, inseparable. And again, that is very important. Another important factors. Just I, I, I started the first session with saying, understanding that originally or fundamentally we are pure and we have Buddha nature. That understanding is very important. So that we don't fall into self-loading, self-hatred when we try to think of all the mistakes we have done, all the negative things we have done. So, so we don't fall into that. Same way we try to do this dissolving and you know merging with the Guru and was sort of us. You know, seeing that the Guru's mind, the Vasadava, the Deity, the Buddha's mind, our mind. In fundamental clear light mind, there's no differences. It's the same. The only difference is our mind is obscure and the mind is unobscure, that clear light mind. It's the same gold. In the being the that same gold, there's no difference. The only thing is one is in the mud, and one is not in the mud. So at the moment, the gold, our gold is in the mud, okay? Like a mud of the obscurations, obscured by the uh, temporary afflictive emotions. Whereas the Buddha's mind is like the gold that has not in the mud. But there is no difference in that two gold. You know, the value um, the nature of the that two goal, there's no difference. So once we overcome that mud obscuration, then, so again to have that understanding, to have that confidence, based on that understanding is important. And so as part of that is that another you know dissolving, emerging the guru and the, the deity and becoming one inseparable. And again, holding on that, resting in that, meditating on that, again and again, is more than, you know. Not only during the meditations, even when you are walking, you, know, you can always visualize your Guru Vasadaba or, you know, Guru Avalokshara, Guru Tara, whatever that is. Again, you can visualize while you are doing, dissolving into yourself and the Guru and the Deity in yourself becoming inseparable one, you know. Uh, so that is, um, that practice is also important factors. Um, and, you know, as, as some masters advice, you know, and most practice should be like that. At the very beginning, we started the Bojita motivation, in the middle, whatever practice, reciting the mantra, visualization, you try to meditate on emptiness. At the end, you try to dedicate for the well-being of all sentient beings, to achieve enlightenment for the well-being of all sentient beings, for the happiness of all sentient beings, for the flourishing of the Dharma, which is the root of happiness of all sentient beings in that way. So then there is the dedications, which I don't need to go that. Okay, so I think with that we that is the Guru Vas um, the Vasada purifications. So of course there are many many others different visualizations, some extensive visualization, but I think it might be too overwhelming as well, and so we try to keep a little bit. Um, Simple at this point. Um, okay, any questions? Either in Zoom or here, any questions? Uh, Scarlett has a question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Go ahead and unmute yourself, Scarlett. Hi, good evening. Um, Geshe, I was wondering, in earlier you mentioned um that like we can if we don't if we have the uh Vajrasattva initiation, we can imagine um Vajrasattva like to the to the heart and then imagine the moon. My question is, what's the difference with that? And if we don't have Vajrasattva initiation and we put Vajrasattva on top of our head, what's the difference? Well, in these visualizations that I spoke, I didn't actually say that to visualize Guru Vajrasattva on your heart. It's still, it is still in the um, space, on top of crown, in the space. But in, if you have initiation, you visualize Vajrasattva. If you don't have any visualization, then, then you visualize yourself. But either, whether you are visualizing Vajrasattva or you are visualizing as your ordinary self, in the heart of that, you visualize the moon disk. On top of the, in the middle of the moon disk, you visualize yourself, ordinary self, surrounded by all other sentient beings. So when you visualize as yourself, as a Vajrasattva, then there is, as a Vajrasattva, there is nothing to purify. Okay? If you are visualizing yourself as Vajrasattva, there is nothing to purify because you are all the Vajrasattva. So in that cases, at the moon, this at the basis of a heart, you visualize your ordinary self in the middle of that moon, and that is what you are purifying. So you are visualizing yourself as the basis of the, but the heart of the basis of the, there is the moon. In the middle of the moon, and there is the, you visualize the ordinary self and surrounded by other sentient things, and then you try the purification of that. That is what... Um, and of course, if we don't have initiations, then we just visualize ourselves as ordinary. And then at the heart of the your ordinary moon, you can also visualize the self and all other sentient beings and then cleansing and purify. So sometimes that can be more easy visualization instead of visualizing all sentient beings surrounding, which feels feel like kind of endless and the cleansing and purifying, but instead of all being here and cleansing and purifying all together. So I don't know, you know, again, individually, how you find more. For me, I feel like it's more, I find it's more easier and more um, to bring your mind to more center easily instead of your mind being kind of spread out because you visualize so many sentient beings, as vast as sentient uh, space, and then cleansing and purifying all of them. Um, so again, um, yeah. So that was that was what I was trying to say. Is that clear? Uh, yes, Geshe. But is it still okay? That sounds very very complicated. Is it still okay to just do visualize Vajrasattva on top of the crown of your head? And if we do, am I visualizing me at the top of the crown? No, you visualize yourself and the crown. You visualize Vajrasattva. So that is a symbol. You just keep that way. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. 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 There's Bill. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm wondering if this is always done at the end or after Are there any benefits to doing it before? Uh -huh. Most of the time, when you follow the particular sadhana or any practice, a lot of time, you know, um, at the end, you know, the, the deity dissolves, guru deity dissolves into the self, and then um, the self dissolves into the emptiness, and then one try to do meditation on emptiness, there is that part a lot of time. But it doesn't mean that you cannot do the meditation on emptiness before that. 
while you are reciting the mantra, you can still do that. You know, um, while you are reciting the mantras, you know, whether it's Basasad or any, any daily practice you do, while you are reciting the mantras, uh, you can still do, um, while you are doing that, you can meditate on emptiness. So, so you can meditate on emptiness at the very beginning, middle, end, you know, um, any times. But when you follow the sadhana, most times they come at the end as part of that sadhana practice itself. But in terms of someone who wanted to meditate, you can meditate um, even while, while you are reciting the mantras, you know. And as I mentioned, I think last time, you know, I just wanted to remind, also when you're doing a lot of, when you're reciting the mantras for long times, and you are doing whatever visualization practice for a long time, you know, as, as mentioned before, sometimes your mind can be a little bit tired because your mind is so, so engaged. You know, your mind is so engaged, so active. All these visualizations, or even you do lumbering meditations, you are doing analytical meditation, so it is always kind of so to to be engaged your mind for so uh, hour and a half hour or two hours uh, can be very tiring, mm -hmm. and so therefore sometime when you feel like little tiring, as I said before, sometimes you recite a mantra and you just focus on the sound of the mantras, you know, and relax your mind, not thinking anything, you know, just listening to the sound of the mantras that you are reciting. And sometimes, as I mentioned, you know, if you are meditating on the emptiness, you do the analytical meditation on the emptiness beginning. But then once you come to the, after the, after the um, analytical, you come to the conclusion that how the self and all phenomena are empty of inherent and truly existence. And when you come to that, then you just rest in that emptiness. Again, no more thinking, no more analyzing. And again, you can just rest in that emptiness, experience the emptiness, rest in that emptiness, try to be in that emptiness. And then I, again, that is a way of also resting your mind, you know, and so, um, and also, when you are doing meditation on the Bodhisattva, you know, again, you do contemplation at the very beginning, and then you try to feel the love, compassion, Bodhisattva mind. And once you feel it, you don't try to do, you just try to experience that, you know, just try to keep that experience and just try to remain in that experience for, you know, a few minutes, you know, two, three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes if you can keep that feelings. And so again, that is, you are doing practice meditation at the same time, you are resting your mind. So that is, those are some of the things that how you can kind of try to rest your mind when, when, when you feel a little bit being tired in such, um, especially when you are doing long, uh, uh, long sessions. Okay? Yes, we have another question online. Yes, please. Catherine, you want to unmute yourself? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity for a question and good evening, um, Geshila. I, I actually think you probably just answered the, the question as, as so often happens, um, but I'll, I'll ask anyways if I might. Um, so you've been so, so, so reassuring about having the, the sense of confidence um, when one does these practices that um, that that they're you know that the the Vajrasattva that the power there um, and and believing in that and at the same time where my mind went anyways and does sometimes mm -hmm. is is to what Lama Zopa would say many times about the eons and eons and eons of many lifetimes and so much negative karma. So when I think of that, I think, oh my goodness, is there a big ocean of, of all of this stuff somewhere? And it's just a little bit kind of coming through at a time. 
um, and, and what to do. And is it a three month practice or, you know, the retreat or, and then you just so kindly again, um, said about resting in emptiness. So I'm wondering if that's the, um, the antidote to that. Um, and if you would be so kind as to shed a little bit of light on that, that would be just lovely. Okay. Um, I think at the I think uh, the first day I think I might have read a little bit of Lama Yeshe on the purification part. Um, again, um, of course, Lama Yeshe didn't explain exactly that way. I will kind of say, but it is like you know. Of course, there's E ones from the beginning of lifetime. We have created negative karma, and when you look from that, it feels like oceans. Whereas our practice in this life, very short time, and it feels like very small. That is not going to dent or make any differences in that oceans. Um, as you mentioned, sometimes we might feel like that, but again, remember, you know. When we bring this practice with the bodhicitta mind and uh, wisdom and the emptiness, meditating with emptiness, and then the reciting of mantra, the power of the mantra itself, and the visualizing when you all beam, is like an atom bomb. Atom bomb might be very small energies, but it can destroy the whole world, you know. And that is like that. It's not about how big it is. It's about the power of that. You know, power of that energy. You know, so even though when we think of countless lifetime, it seems like so big. And our practice seems so small, tiny, even though it's tiny in terms of durations of the period of begins lifetime versus one lifetime. If within the li one lifetime, very short period. But when the practice is done correctly with all the requirements, all the conditions, then it is like an atom, uh, at, um, uh, atom bomb. It's like the atom bomb, you know, super power, powerful. So I think, um, so I think that is one thing we have to remember. That is one thing we have to remember. And um, when such thoughts comes, um, such doubt, the thought arises. Um, and of course, you know, if we have the opportunity practice to do, you know, hundred thousands, more than hundred thousands, whether we do in three months retreat, or whether we do, you know, in a, Every day, little, little, and then we finish in a year, two years. Or, you know, or even you cannot do uh, with that number, at least you try to do 21, day, uh, 21 the, um, the 100 syllables. If you are doing the short 20, uh, 28 times each day, and then when you do that, you try to do with sensibly and as powerful as possible. And so then, you know, definitely, you know, um, sometimes in, in most things, sometimes it is not the quantity, it's the qualities, you know. And so if the qualities are done well, it can be purified. Um, so again, like, like many things, you know, um, so it depends on individuals, you know. If someone can do the practice well, Maybe they might not have to do uh, so much, but for those who cannot do so well, then the more you do, the better it is. Um, and then, you know, small, small, many efforts make a big change. Um, so definitely the key, definitely the key to purify is, you know, while all the visualization the reciting mandala, also the emptiness and bringing the emptiness and the bodhicitta factor within the whole practice is very, very important factor because those both are the very most very powerful um, 
practice to purify. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, so I think um, maybe that's. I think that is all I can kind of say. Thank you so much. That was that was yeah. just so, so the, the so amazing. The concept of the atomic bomb, just inordinately helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yes, yes, Le, um I got confused. Um, what's the difference in the visualization between if you have the Rajasattva initiation versus you don't? Either way, it seemed like you were, I'm, I'm sure I'm the one who misunderstood, but I, either way, it seemed like you were saying that certainly Vajasattva is the crown of your head and you and all the sentient beings are at your heart. Uh, but what happens when you have an initiation? No, if you have initiation, you can visualize yourself as a deity. But if you don't have, then you cannot. But then if you're already the deity, then what's there to, you, you mentioned that. So that is, if you are already deity, then at the heart of the deity on the moon days, you visualize your ordinary self. Ah, oh, okay, got it. Okay. And that is what is being purified when you okay. do the purifications while you are visualizing as the deity. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, we can do the dedications now. Yeah. Uh, dedication prayers, please. Oh, gosh, I got to find this one. Oh, uh, the previous page. Gewadi Next one, Michael. Next page. Ah. The yeah, assembly of children of the victorious one, Sapaka and Pratika Buddhas, victorious Lord, son, father, and son, along the lineage, master, all the refugees, refugees in infinite lands. Please bestow the virtue and goodness of accomplishing this prayer here and now, holding and spreading the Muni's precious and complete teaching through explanation and practice. You are the amount of patience that is never discouraged. Mm -hmm. Incomparable and venerable Guru, to you I make request. Single pointly for the sake of victorious ones, teaching, soul gateway through which all benefit and happiness emerge from born the peace, what a great loss. Nevertheless, of the blessings of the oceans of the three jewels and the great wave of bodhicitta of the children of the victorious one, may the smile of reincarnation swiftly beam in glory for the fortunate. Thank you very much for everyone who have joined here in person and in Zoom, making the uh, giving your precious time, and I hope. Not only will listen, but hopefully you will. I'm sure, I'm not that many of you have been in practice, been practicing that, and hopefully maybe 
and you have already studies and practice much, but hopefully maybe it might have given some reminder or maybe some here a little bit one or two things that you can that might be helpful to add or to modify it or whatever that um, that can support your practice to become maybe more um, you know more stronger or more powerful or maybe more inspirations more enthusiasms so yeah so hopefully um, you will try to practice um, try to take it in practice and do a little bit and even you cannot follow everything, every visualization, everything at least, at least, you know, a little bit simplified of that. Even you cannot do the hundred syllable, the short mantras, twenty-eight times. That would just take you less than five minutes, you know. And if you try to bring some other part of the practice, you could do in ten, fifteen minutes. It wouldn't take and. There's nothing to lose, you know, even though sometimes we might have certain doubt whether can really, can this practice, can 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 it really purify? If we cannot see it, it's something not that we can see with our eyes immediately. Um, but, you know, all those great enlightened beings, not just one, you know, throughout the, all the uh, um, um, and many of those, most of those masters are not just a um, believer, you know. They are very great philosophers, examining everything, examining even the Buddha's words, you know. Even the Buddha's words, like Nagarjuna, Chandrakirti, Shandideva, all those masters, Indian masters, also like Lama Tonkhava, all including His Holiness, you know, scrutinizing, not be. Even Buddha's word, His Holiness scrutinizing, even Nagarjuna's word sometimes, even Asanga's, even his teachers sometimes when he are raising the questions, you know. And so those are the beings who are not just believe what someone says, they actually really analyze. And if they find is, you know, as Lama Chongkhapa said, if it goes against the valid um, reasonings, uh, you are uh, not really great persons. So, you know, always. And so all of them has, uh, you know, more or less have said same things, you know, can be purified if we do the practice. Um, so sometimes maybe, because I cannot trust myself. At least I can trust them. Um, and that is with their experience, that is what they have said. You know? um, and so on the basis of that, sometimes that can help us to have a little bit more confidence in those practices. Because sometimes we could have a doubt, you know. Okay, so thank you. Good night. Thank you.